The first part of the texture editor videos is just a brief overview. Let's start with the menu bar. By default, all the tools will appear, but they can be deactivated by right-clicking on the toolbar area. On the menu bar, under File, we can access things like the UV properties and preferences, which we'll take a look at later. Under Edit, we can copy and paste UVs per polygon, create UV clusters, duplicate the UV projection, freeze the UV operation to free up the memory, and stamp the UV mesh to use the image as a reference to paint your texture. Under View, we have a bunch of commands and associated shortcut keys related to navigation tools in the texture editor, such as panning, zooming, and framing. We have other tools to hide and reveal UVs, set the image clip resolution, and options to show UV overlap and coverage. Pretty much all of the tools found under Tools and Select appear as icons on the menu and we'll see them shortly. Under Snap we can specify that when transforming the UVs that they snap to desired areas such as pixel corners, edges, points, etc. Under Shader we find all shaders that require a UV projection such as another image or bump map generator for example that are connected to the same object. We also have a list of all available clips that can substitute a current clip in the texture editor just to see how they would look using the current UV set. But they don't actually connect to the object unless you do so on the render tree or texture layer editor. Under UVs are listed available UV projections for the object and options to wrap the texture in U or V in the texture editor. Let's take a look at the icons. First, the update icons. Of course, most of you already know the lock, which will prevent a refresh if you select another object or components in the 3D view. The update button will force a refresh if the lock button is on. The C icon will clear the texture editor space. The sync button will update the sample selection in the 3D view to match the UVs in the texture editor. You can activate Auto Sync in the Texture Editor Preferences. Then you won't need to use the Sync button. The selection icons provide different types of selection modes. For example, you can select UVs using either UVs themselves, UV edges, UV polygons, or a mixture of all of them. When making a selection of UVs, you can include for each of them, all the UVs sharing the same polymesh vertex. You can also select UV islands or clusters of UVs. The view buttons will allow displaying or hiding the currently selected UVs. You also have a dim switch to better see the UVs. The amount of dim can be set in the preferences. You also have the highlight buttons, which basically highlights UV coverage or UV gaps or holes. Finally, a very useful tool, the connectivity highlights, which highlights UV edges to indicate which ones are adjacent and need to be stitched together or used as a reference when creating a texture and all this to ensure continuity. The tools buttons include the selection tool, the move tool and the crop tool. The cleanup tools bring the UVs together by collapsing them at a single point vertically horizontally, or collapsing among themselves all UVs belonging to the same vertex. The polygon cycling tools change the index of each UVs, rotating or flipping the texture without transforming any UVs in the texture editor. 
The projection selection provides the ability to select sample points of the object in the 3D view using the global X, Y or Z plane. The subprojection tools are used to reproject a subset of UVs using a different method than the one used for the whole UV set while remaining members of that same UV set. This is done for UVs that are still overlapping after the first projection. The Edit UV buttons are used to transform the location of UVs. You can scale, rotate and translate UVs. You can use the Transform tool in conjunction with the Pivot tool or specify the exact UV location by entering numeric values. Finally, the playback tools are used to play animated textures.